Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Both defenses will have to be on the watch for a pair of tight ends looking to find seams in the secondary. It's the Broncos going up against the Eagles. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look live there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Just a short time ago, these Philly fans in full roar as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. Pyrotechnics ablaze. They're set to go as their Eagles will match up with the Denver Broncos. Hello again, everybody. I'm Brandon Gordon here in the booth. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And you know, Charles Larry took a moment to highlight a couple of the tight ends that we're going to see in this game. Both of these teams really look to get them involved in the offense early and often, don't they? And we continue to see in the NFL how the tight end is becoming more and more of a highlighted position. Some of these guys can flex out like wide receivers. A lot of them can come inside, block as well as catch passes. He's exactly right. Tight end. That's a position we'll continue to follow as this game unfolds. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the second tallest quarterback in league history at six foot seven inches. It's Brock Osweiler. I saw Brock Osweiler throw in a practice session while he was in college, and it's never left me the memory of how smooth he was throwing the ball, how accurate he was, and what a catchable ball he threw. They go play action here on first down. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So flag for the contact, pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. Go on, go on! Go on, go on! Go on! Now a carry. It's C.J. Anderson. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. The offensive starters now for the Broncos. Often overlooked and almost always underrated, C.J. Anderson has an impact on games that he plays. Very strong up top, has really good balance as well. I've seen him bounce off of tacklers, stay on his feet, and continue to churn out additional gains. Also pretty effective in the passing game as well. Second down, eight. A fake to Anderson. Now it's Osweiler. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Time to introduce you to the Philadelphia defense. It's a defense that has been terrific with a 7-1 start. Number one in the league against the run. And they're about to get a couple key pieces back to the secondary. Yeah, you're talking about Ronald Darby. And if Sidney Jones, their second-round pick out of Washington, is able to make it back this season... As a cornerback, that would be huge for them. But here's what I see when I watch them play. Up front, Fletcher Cox and Tim Jernigan are just holding down the middle, and they are just making things difficult to run the football. Getting nice pass rush off the edge. Brandon Graham, Chris Long off the bench. Nigel Bradley playing at an all-pro level in the middle as a linebacker. And then back deep, the secondary, they tackle. You may complete the pass, but you don't get much yardage after it. And that's really helping their defense. Folks, as you hear my partner say all this stuff, I want you to realize he does not use notes. That's how good he is. Well, one thing's for sure. When you've got a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively.
Now the second-year man from Syracuse, Riley Dixon, on to punt. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So here come the Philadelphia Eagles, 7-1, and one, and a guy that is generating some MVP buzz. Carson Wentz, you had their game last week. Well, I guess the Eagles and Carson Wentz are for real, no doubt. There's no doubt about it, and he should be generating MVP buzz because he has elevated his game in his second season. 19 touchdown passes, ties for the NFL lead. Latest into the season, first or second year players had the league lead since Dante Culpepper in 2000. But bigger than that, when you talk with their team, Fletcher Cox, their all-pro defensive tackle, he told me, all we want to do as a defense is get the ball back for number 11. He inspires the heck out of us. Here's Wentz to throw, and his first pass is incomplete. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Second down following the incompletion. Now it's the Boise State alum, Jay Ajayi. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. To throw, it's Wentz. Now they set up the screen, that's complete. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. So the offense has it first and 10. Here's a Jai. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So in week eight, Denver lost to Kansas City by 10, but you can't pin this on these defensive starters that we see on the screen because they haven't even allowed a rushing touchdown this season. And they were the first team to hold Kansas City rookie Kareem Hunt, who's off to a sensational start to his career. First team to hold him under 100 yards from scrimmage in a game eight games into his illustrious rookie year. So they are playing well. In fact, after the game, I saw where Trevor Simeon, the quarterback of Denver, did say, hey, look, our offensive and defensive lines both played very well tonight. I was the one that caused all the problems for our team, so they've got to get back to taking care of the ball and being more efficient. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. So a third and nine and six defensive backs out there in the dive. Patrolling the passing lanes. From the gun, it's Wins. Looking for Aguilar, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Will Parks. And a great return as they're finally able to take him down. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted.
before the offense gets going again, league-wide story here. You and I got a kick out of Juju Smith-Schuster post-game comments because he had a long touchdown, <laughs> and he said he kept looking over his shoulder because his Madden rating was only an 82 or an 83, thought he was going to get caught. Yeah, you can tell he's a youngster because us old folks, that's when the Satchel Page quote comes in. Don't look back. Someone might be gaining on you. <laughs> but I loved how, I love the fact that he said, my rating, I, I thought I was faster than that, essentially. <laughs> well, guess what? The ratings get updated each week. Juju, you will be an 89 <laughs> starting next week. And by the way, your actual rating prior to, it was 88. Yeah, you were a little off, but bottom. Got his man, it's Thomas. Touchdown, Denver. Demarius Thomas there to make the grab. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. Well, that didn't take long. The turnover instantly almost turning into points. And when that happens, a lot of teams have the mentality of let's strike right now. You've got them off balance after the turnover or the takeaway. Let's go get it. And that's exactly what they did. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And he's got it. 7 nothing Broncos. A nice, tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. Now McManus on to kick this one off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Brandon Marshall leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. And here the pressure from the outside linebacking spot. And normally when that happens and they're able to get home, that means the other guys on his team helped him out a lot. That They occupied people to allow it to be no less than a one-on-one -on -one situation. Allows him to get home. Second down, here's Wentz. And he's going to go down again. Vaughn Miller in there to get him. And this pass rush strong now. That sacks on back-to-back -back plays. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches. And when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. Eagles coming up here on a third and long, so Wentz and company with some work to do after the sack. Shotgun now for Wentz. A dump off to Smallwood. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means.
Donnie Jones set to punt it away now in his 14th year in the NFL. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Start the drive with Anderson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step. And that's a big pickup right there on first down. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Right, here we go. Green, Again, Anderson. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Going to be some contact going on. Here we go now. They'll run it. Here's Anderson. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. We ought to come up with a T-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulders square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now it's the Chiefs all-time leading rusher. It's Jamal Charles on the carry. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. Here we go now. Three, nine, nine. Again, it's Charles. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. He lost two there, and it's third down. I'm getting the sense that Fletcher Cox is making offensive linemen want to take the week off when they have to play against him. <laughs> it's a regular routine for him, isn't it? It really is. That play there, that's him all day long. Good luck trying to block him and keep him from disrupting your offense. And yeah, the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. Play action. It's Osweiler. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Riley Dixon now. 
as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, <laughs> two drives with turnovers. Now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. They'll begin the drive with a J. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Now a play fake here on first down. He sets to fire deep. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. <laughs> He had a great move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The Eagles on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. A first carry now for Wendell Smallwood. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside of the 40. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now they'll throw it. Wentz. And this is Ertz with it. Right side. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here. And a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. 
any part of it that's going to be 15 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Working from the gun, Wentz. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Jay Ajayi, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Eagles are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Didn't have anything downfield, swung it out to the flat. He did the rest. Such a staple of so many offenses we see now. You know, in our discussions with offense coordinators, how many times do they tell us, hey, this offense is designed for either a touchdown or a check down? We saw the check down on that play, and boy, was it successful. We saw a touchdown, too. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So the drive there took six plays, and it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So the Broncos coming out now and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They run it again with Anderson. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Anderson. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. On 
Second down, Jamal Charles. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Call it a gain of five that time. They'll be left with a third down at about nine to go. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Broncos on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. It's a tight game here early. And we're back to Philadelphia after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two. They're staring up at a third and nine to start it out. with Osweiler and able to find Green and out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45 that one good for 13 and a Denver first down and that's how you pick up a first down not only does he make the catch but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done so here, the men in charge are going to be looking at whether or not the receiver had possession of the ball as he went out of bounds. And they have to make sure that the receiver got both feet down in bounds as well. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Play action now. Osweiler. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Virgil Green is tied in the intended receiver. And it's second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. But that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass. Incomplete. On second down, Anderson. <laughs> and down inside the 40 to about the 38. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. The Broncos on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll run it now out of the gun. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there and swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. Now Brandon McManus for the Bronco field goal. This from 54 yards away. And 
And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. Wentz now on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time, and that'll bring up second down. Now we got a second. Let's peek back to the Thursday night game, Baltimore-Miami, 40 to nothing. Baltimore, who stole the show for you? The Cat, because the game, the game <laughs> certainly did not, but the Cat did, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. I do. That Cat gets on the field, what was it, third quarter of the game, yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood, and I love the moves. Even though no one was really pursuing, he was letting you know, hey, if you try and catch me, Juke you left and right and showed some good straight line speed too when he made a beeline line over the sideline there. No doubt about it. It was definitely the cat. Dolphins could have used the cat, but a little spooky a few days before Halloween with him running out or well, around it, the field. It, it wasn't a black cat. That's true. Okay, so, That's so that true. helped a little bit. And I understand that Ravens employees have adopted the cat, named the cat Ray, short for Ravens. So what do you call that? A perfect ending. Now Wentz on third down. And he's got some space here. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Seven yards. And we all know it's turned into a passing league in the NFL, but that doesn't mean people still don't like to run the football. When you run it that successfully, your offensive line is fired up. What they want to do each and every game is run block. Get out and smack some people. I would say go ahead and run it again. way forward here for a modest game. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. And a nice job defensively to keep him out of the end zone. He's trying to get a second touchdown already in the first half. They had that one earlier, was bidding for a second. They'll go to Blunt, try and pound it in. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that'll make it third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three out of five thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now Wentz. This is taken in by Jeffrey. He's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. Alshon Jeffrey from four yards out. And the Eagles have taken the lead. 
And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Elliott now to add the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drives seven plays in length. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Elliott now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Time for us to spotlight C.J. Anderson. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense has done a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, it's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. See if he can look and do some soul searching now. Tenth carry now for Anderson. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. only up to about the 35. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Third down now. It's C.J. Anderson. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. down. Here's the run with Anderson. And an alley to run. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Now Osweiler. He's got it. The tight end, Jeff Hireman. Denver has the first down. The play going for 15 yards. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field. So it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. Off 
off the play fake. Here's Osweiler. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Call it a gain of three, and it'll be a second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a solid run down inside the 30. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. The Broncos on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Back to the ground. This time it's Anderson. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. On every snap, a defense is trying to establish who they are, but on third and short, that's really when you put it out there and tell people who you are, and that's exactly what they did. For the offense, they're looking at their offensive line and saying, guys, where are you? We need you on those plays. Now Brandon McManus for the Bronco field goal. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So a good kick that time, and he's able to redeem himself from the previous miss. And fortunately for him, he got the chance to do that not long after missing the first time. Sometimes a whole game goes by, and you don't get that chance at all. So you keep it with you till the next time you take the field. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action. Now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But, you know, there was a big-time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> that he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> on first and ten, here's Wentz. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? It closed fast.
They stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. as he stopped behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. his way forward here for a good little gain. Four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Here's Donnie Jones now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. Now we look at C.J. Anderson as he trots back out there and gets set to go on offense. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah serve as your running play that way as well as continue to feed him the football some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it sometimes people after a while they don't want to tackle him anymore or they get tired or they get out of position or he runs through tackles continue to feed him the ball he's having that kind of game yeah might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here well with a little breather here let's discuss some of the trades from last week Garoppolo trade aside because I know you were surprised by that one what else stood out to you well Marcel Darius who is a tremendous defensive tackle an absolute force when he's ready to play didn't quite click all the time in Buffalo. He's in Jacksonville now. That helps an already formidable defensive front for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think Dwayne Brown held out at the beginning of the year. Now playing with the Houston Texans. He's traded to Seattle who desperately needed some help on the offensive line. And Jay Ajayi from the Dolphins to the Eagles. Now remember, they drafted Jay Ajayi in the fifth round. They ended up getting a fourth round pick back for him. That one surprised me a little bit as well, but the Dolphins haven't been happy with their production so far. The Broncos on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and 11. Now a give. Right side, Charles. And he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. 
And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Riley Dixon now, standing just about on his own goal line. Yeah, he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. First is Lentz. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. And with that incompletion, want to get your thoughts on the game of the week from Week 8. I think it had to be Seahawks-Texans, was it not? I don't see how any other game could equal that. Talk about ebb and flow, back and forth, and an amazing quarterback duel with Deshaun Watson, the rookie from Houston, and, of course, Russell Wilson with Seattle. Wilson Seagulls won the game, but Richard Sherman, what he said about Deshaun Watson after the game, I thought that he'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Eagles coming up here on a third and long, so Wentz and company with some work to do after the sack. They run the counter, Smallwood. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Now the Broncos are going to take a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Donnie Jones now, as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. This is taken at about the 14. 47-yard punt, a return of four. And it'll be first and 10 Broncos from deep in their own territory. Heading back out for another drive, here's Jamal Charles. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people. Find some other playmakers. But always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, him. don't take him totally out of the game. Now Osweiler on first down. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Fletcher Cox coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about 9. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? 
What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles on top as we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Okay, Brandon, thanks. And welcome, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. The Eagles are happy to be sitting in the locker room with a lead. The Broncos just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. All right, let's do it. Here's a look at the first half highlights. Offense on the field now after the pick. Osweiler's on target here. And after the short pass, he'll score as they take a 7-0 lead. Eagles with the ball, end of the first. is wide open here on the catch. And this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. The Eagles tied up at 7. Third down from inside the 10. Jeffries wide open here on the catch. And he counts off the six-play drive with the score. Eagles up by a touchdown. Now first and 10, Cox has got the sack here. This goes for a loss of nine. That'll do it for us here at EA Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as they'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. It's hauled in by Torrey Smith. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Well, that certainly looked like the Torrey Smith we knew in Baltimore. A guy can just run past defenses, and what do they say? Take the top right off of him. Game-changing speed, and the days in Baltimore good, days in San Fran not so great, but now hoping to get back to his former self. I would say they have an extremely motivated wide receiver in Torrey Smith. Fresh set of downs here. On play action, it's Wentz. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. It's lining up first and ten. This is a giant. And he's brought down. Back to back 11 yard gains, and they've got another first down. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So, how has he done it? Because he's been patient. 
followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short gain down to about the 33. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. The Eagles on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. Here it's third and two. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. He loses four, and it brings up four. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but... Um... Looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed them for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. Now Jake Elliott for the field goal try. This is a 49-yard attempt. Right hash. And the kick by Elliott is good. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Going now, Osweiler on first down. And that'll be incomplete. Well, we got a little second here, so I want to give some week eight kicker love. There were a lot of field goals made in the NFL this past week. I think we had six guys that made four or more. Well, let's call them out, and let's start with your friend from Georgia ah, Tech. Harrison Bucker, yeah, he was five of five. They have Matt Prater, five for five. Kai Forbath, four of four. Mike Nugent missed one, but he was still four for five. <laughs> Matt Bryant, four for four. Steven Goskowski, oh, he was the worst out of all of them. Four for six. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to give him a shout-out because, hey, and sometimes we forget how important these kickers are in these games. Exactly. As a colleague of ours, Rich Eisen, is fond of saying, kickers are people, too. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. 
from the gun on third down. Osweiler, he's got his man here. It's green. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So here we go, first and ten now. Another tote here for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Anderson. He fights him off. And I give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. On second down, here's Osweiler. And Green with a catch left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. They go play action here on first down. The catch is made, Benny Fowler. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 22. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first and 10, it's Osweiler. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Sharp there with his feet, gets him a little extra space, and then dropped just inside the 20. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. So the offense has it first and ten. They'll keep it on the ground, this time to Charles. And he lost the football. Charles loses it. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. So after nearly turning it over, new life here for the offense on second down. They snap it at one. Now it's Osweiler. And that's incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. 
The Broncos on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and 10. the gun it's Osweiler oh he stays up runs through the contact and that is incomplete quarterback in 101 never force the ball into double coverage especially not this close to the goal line the windows are so tight you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off now Brandon McManus for the Bronco field goal from the right hash this from 33 And McManus able to put it through. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. A decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvage three out of it, but they do inch a bit closer. Yeah, still lots of time to go in this one. Take the points, move on, and let your defense try to get the ball back. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's yeah, a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. They'll start out on the ground with a giant. And he'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down following the run. They'll run it now out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll bring up a third down. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game as we just saw there. The Eagles on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and seven. Play action, now Wentz. Gonna look deep for Jefferson. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it, now it's four. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of success in the passing game here. Now, in the second half, he's thinking, I guess maybe just take a shot deep. I think you're right. Almost looking for a bailout, isn't he? Can my receiver go up and make a big play for me? Can I create a penalty downfield, maybe pick up an interference call and get that yardage downfield? Anything trying to get going again, but you're right. He definitely took a shot. Here is the punter Jones as he gets this one away. This is taken at the 15. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Now, 
And they'll try to fire up the running game with C.J. Anderson. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. the 30 here it's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains and that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run and at that yardage gained they can run that plan any down first down and 10 now for the offensive group Carry number 20 coming up for Anderson. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. throw it with Osweiler and caught right side green and he'll get it up near the 35 right at the 34 here that catch good for five it's third down how about the timing on that one where they were in sync weren't they three-step drop balls out of his hands right to the tight end nice completion just like they do it in practice the Broncos on third down they're right at about the league average 40 percent four for ten this will be third and six From the gun, it's Osweiler. And this is going to be incomplete. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength. And he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Eagles will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. There's a handoff to Ajayi to begin the drive. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Part I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. 
I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. To throw, it's Wentz. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. <laughs> So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. First down, Osweiler. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. From the shotgun, Osweiler. Able to shake him off. And his throw's going to be incomplete. This has been a really nice day for the defense. They've made it so difficult to find open receivers because they're able to squeeze the passing lanes down. A lot of what they're doing is communicating. Receivers in one area, receivers in another area. They're almost what they call passing them off from one defender to the next, even in zone defenses, and making it very hard to find an open spot for the quarterback to deliver the ball. Now Jamal Charles on third down. And some room to work. <laughs> Fancy footwork by Charles. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. Every player I know tends to play the game in his mind before it actually happens. There is no way he thought that at this stage of the game, this would be his first big run like that. Yeah, but it's got to feel for him like the floodgates open a sigh of relief. Now we'll see if things can open up for him. See if it can continue. So it'll be first down here after the run. They'll throw on first down with Osweiler. He goes underneath for Anderson. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Call it a three-yard gain, and that'll make this a second down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. On second down, Osweiler. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Brandon Graham in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. 
Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So a big sack on second down. Now let's see what the offense has in store for third. All right, here we go. Three, 19. Now it's Osweiler. And that is incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and try to think with them here. Try to play field position, maybe. Turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> and not great starting field position here for the offense. Now a play fake here on first down. And they're going to sack him again. The fifth time they've gotten him today, and this one results in a safety. And you know the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well, and they free kick it from the 20 now. Oh, he's got some breathing room. <laughs> The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Here we go now. Three. Osweiler. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Now that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackler. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. Well, <laughs> they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage.
third and long. It's Osweiler. Going underneath for Charles. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A gain of four on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. What hallmark of good defenses? It's understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And last time they surrendered to safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you've got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. few times here today this run's not going to go anywhere officially no gain on the play and it's second down but Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage they've got the football but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play you know my, my music teacher back in New Paltz Mrs. Bythema Bagley used to say don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo and what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice slow deliberate pace I am speechless. I am without speech. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Oh, it's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They'll run it now out of the gun. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it's going to make it third down at six. You'll forgive me if I get excited about what we just saw there, won't you? I know I'm supposed to be neutral here, but those were terrific plays back-to-back -back defensively. They know what the mission is. They've got to force a punt here if they want to have a chance to win the game. They absolutely do. Steps one and two done. Now they need this third step. They fake the give. Now wins. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Now that's a big pick up right there, and so often we focus on how the quarterback's picking up play action. How about everyone being in on the deal and picking it up? Second, third levels, you can see them trying to recover. They bit. Worked out offensively. And here comes play number six on this drive. They'll go wins to Blunt here. 
Brought down, but after we saw a flashy little move, stopped short of the 40. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. See if they stay on the ground for second down. And again this time to the tailback. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and they're going to have a third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. Working from the gun, Wentz. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. Here's Donnie Jones now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted spotted at the 14-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Weiler on first down. On the right side, caught by Green. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books. But now they have to make that up again, don't they? To throw is Osweiler. Looking for Green, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 11, and they're set up in a golden position here right around the 10-yard line. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find the spot, and now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. A chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's getting off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps, and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case,
Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. They'll run it now out of the gun. And finding room to work, he's down to the two-yard line. It'll be a pickup of eight and a good first step there with second and goal coming up. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Yeah, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. On second down, here's Wentz. And too much on that one. It's out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver. And it's third and short. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss a one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. He definitely wants that one back. They'll try to run with a J. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. This drive started with first and goal. Now that it's fourth and goal, anything less than a touchdown would feel like a letdown to me. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Elliott puts this one through, and that will push the lead up to five. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Brock Osweiler now heading out there to get set to go here on offense. And the interception that ended their previous drive, that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game. Hey, partner, guess what? There's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game. They're only one score down. Yeah, true. I mean, we could have some twists and turns. Stay tuned. And leading here late, so a chance for the defense to really close out this game if they can halt the offense. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Benny Fowler that time. That'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. Second and 10 now, Osweiler. And it's caught over the middle by the tight end, Green. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Fresh set of downs here. Watch left, watch left, watch left. All right, here we go. Three, 
throwing now. Osweiler on first down. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off at the 46. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Agreed, that's twice now in this fourth quarter. As a quarterback, a lot of times you think it's all on you to make plays when you're losing. And here, the play's not there, but he throws it anyway. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And at this stage of the game, time a factor, time on their side as they just try to eke out the final precious moments of this one. And he'll give it here to his running back. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a handoff looking right. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. And the Broncos go to a nickel set on third down. Yeah, they've got an extra DB out there. They give the small wood. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Here's Donnie Jones now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Here's Brock Osweiler and the Texan offense getting set to go. I would imagine you want to win every game big, but... If you're a quarterback in the NFL, this is the spot that you love. You've been dreaming of it since you were a kid, playing in the backyard or the front yard, wherever, where you went through those imaginary situations. Now it's real, though. What practice have you put in since the OTAs, the mini camps, preseason camp, sequence of plays, get the ball to the outside, get it out of bounds, save your timeouts, move the ball downfield to get your team in a position to win the game. And a field goal, of course, no good. They need a score. 
Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Back to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Well, too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Here we go now. Three, 19. He'll look to throw. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver, and it's third and five. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Back to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Mills. And they're going to be set up in the red zone at the 15. And that one, oh, it's going to hurt big time. You're in the two-minute drill, trying to get your guys down the field, and it's looking like they're going to go up just short, as this is definitely not his best throw. And it'll wind up being intercepted. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. And a great spot to start this drive from here. On first down, they'll run it on the draw play. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. A handoff as they run the counter play. And now running right through it. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. The Eagles in the victory formation as they take an E. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. 
And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Eagles are winners here as we say so long from Philadelphia.